Hello there, my name's Mark, and these are my Dice Tales, and today I'm going to be playing Lion Rampant, and I'm playing it with an opponent. And the reason for that is because I'm playing it virtually. I'm playing it on Universal Battle 2, which is a web-based, well you can download it as well, an app-based uh, system. You can play it on your phone as an app, uh, Android and iPhone. And basically it's a table where you can drag and drop units onto the board, and then you can roll some dice virtually. And I think it's fantastic, and because Lion Rampart is a lovely, beautiful game, I'm really, really enjoying it. And I recently picked up the Crusader States. I'm going to be playing with the Crusader State armies, and my opponent's just going to be playing with random ones. We're going to be playing a Bloodbath, we're going to be playing with Boasts, and I'm going to just talk about our two armies in a moment, and then there's going to be a 10-minute time-lapse. I'm going to see if I can talk over it, I don't know if I can, try and introduce you to the Universal Battle System and uh, see how that game went. So let's bring up one of the armies. So this is my army. So this is an army from the Crusader States book and it is the Muslim principalities of Anatolia and Syria or the Assassin's Army. And I think it's called this, well I think their main gist seems to be that they've got very fast movement. Um, so let's see, we've got two mounted sergeants now you notice I'm chopping and changing these little cheat cards I've made. I'm saying light infantry here, light infantry should be yeomen, but Dragon Rampant and Crusader State sort of changes to this convention. I haven't quite got around to renaming some of the cards in my um, in my Photoshop file. So I've got two mounted sergeants, they're fairly standard and they're going to be the main uh, bites of my force. Fierce foot, so I'm really looking to get some, uh, these are great in um, rough terrain, so I'm really hoping for some rough terrain on the table. Uh, hit attack value of 3, they're technically my best fighters. They do have wild charge, and they've got a fantastic movement of 8, so they can outcharge most uh, people. Uh, mounted yeoman, and they've been, been given 2 extra points to get experts. So these are mounted guys with javelins, uh, they can scoot around the board and throw their javelins 12 inches and hopefully do some points without taking damage themselves. And they can also skirmish and evade, so when they charge they can try and get away, they can get in. Again, great movement of 12. And finally, light infantry or yeoman infantry. Um, great defenders, so maybe I can try and block with them. Uh, now, I'm actually doing this review of my army after the battle. Uh, so let's see if what I've just learned of reading my, my army in, um, in detail makes any difference. And also, fierce, there was a mistake in the uh, Crusader States book. They call them fear. No, they don't call them fierce. They call them wild Turks. Uh, and the only thing I could assume that that meant was fierce foot. So let's switch, get rid of that army and bring in my opponent's army. This is just his homemade army. Um, doesn't have Crusader States. This is just made up from lion, lion rampant. And again, sorry about some of the foot uh, naming conventions. So we've got um, Footmen at Arms, uh, they've got an attack value of 3 and armour of 4, they're going to be very hard even though they're only 6 strength points, they're going to be very hard to take out. Uh, do not mistake them uh, for being weak, for having 6. Mountain Sergeants, similar to me, and Expert Archer, so they... Ooh, do they shoot on a 5 plus? I think maybe need to change that, I thought Expert shot on a 4 plus. I'll double check that, see if I need to amend my card, and foot sergeants, so they're like medium infantry. Okay, let's get rid of that, and let's bring in the game. So we're going to switch to a battle mode, it's about 10 minutes long, so if you've just joined us on the uh, timestamp link, uh, it's just going to play, and I'm going to try and take over it. So we're just deploying our units, uh, so we're deploying our units one at a time, most of the units have already been deployed here. And this is what the Universal Battle System looks like. You can see sort of down the left-hand side you've got the chat box and that records the dice rolls and the movements that have been made. I've just brought in a dice roller, um, that box sort of in the middle left there. So you can choose how many dice you're rolling, what type of dice you're rolling. So there it's set to 2, roll d6. You've just seen me roll it and I've got a 2 and a 6, so 6, 7, 8. And um, I would have decided to move my uh, light cavalry and move, move those on. And then you can see me making a number of rolls and 
clinging on my first foot. So basically moving all my army down that right um, right flank there. So I've got first foot, the the light yeoman skirmishers and the medium cavalry there. The two light infantry going down the middle and the other light cavalry at the edge there. My, opponent's, my opponent's a little bit more disciplined than me, so he's just dropped some red tokens on the board. And he's going to show a when a unit is activated, he's going to use red tokens to say they've been activated. We also start using that red, um, red, that three uh, distance marker as highlighting which unit we're talking about, which unit we're moving. I sometimes revert to the pen tool and you see me doing little scribbles on the board to try and suggest what I'm doing. So you can see that um, you can't manipulate your opponent's army, you can only manipulate your army. And those big rough, rough fields, they are rough ground, so they're going to be slowing us down. And that's it. I don't think there's much more to say other than uh, watch the battle commence. So he's just moving into the rough ground. He wants to get the rough ground benefit because I think my horsemen are better than him. And when you both meet in rough ground, your armor gets reduced, your attack dice gets worse. So it's actually a bad idea for my medium cavalry to engage on that. Um, so I initially go in thinking, yeah, I'll do it anyway. And then I, uh, I pull myself back. So you can see this universal battle system is a dead easy system. I'm just wondering if I got a red, red square on that. Let's see if I can get that away. You can just drag and drop these rules around to try and gauge the inches. When you drag a unit, you get that white um, ever-expanding rule that sort of tells you where you are. So what we found was um, there's a little green light on the bottom there, just underneath where the tools are, underneath where it says draw. We find that if you turn that on, you can move one unit and you have that white um, rule of distance coming up and then drag and drop the rest of the army around them. I really like the simple movements, like it's not a fixed foot. And then he's sort of suggesting, is he shooting with his uh, archers or is he moving his sergeants up? And he's gone for the sergeants in the field. They've, they've only moved to small bits because they got rough ground, slowing them down. I forget to move my uh, light guys in the middle. And they've just taken some damage from the archers behind the wall there. And I now have a string of bad luck. Um, if you watch, I have sped up the battle. It was a two hour battle, but it has, it's now been condensed into a 10 minute talk. I mean, do mute me and just watch the battle play out. But you'll see the dash rolls go very fast down the left hand side. Another feature of universal battle, you can zoom in as we're trying to measure exactly who can charge in and what our ranges are. I've got 12 inch range on those horses. He's bugging out a bit. Because I think I had a plan that I wanted to move my horses to engage his men at arms. I think that's a very bad idea. His men at arms are very tough. It looks like a very weak unit, just being six months there in the middle. But they turn out to be um, devastating. You can see it's sort of moving that uh, three or bubble around to indicate that it's moving that unit. I often give away what my tactics are. I say I'm going to move this unit and just sort of draw where I want to go and then roll a dice and nothing comes of it. I should stop doing that. Imagine your, your enemy giving you uh, giving your battle plans away. So he's just staying at charge range there. I think I have a string. Uh, this is this is my entire battle plan. Do I move these? Do I move them? Do I want to get into cover of that wall? I finally moved out to there. So they can potentially charge those men at arms next turn. Another feature, I wonder if we're going to see a battle, we're going to strike, yeah. We've just seen him roll 12 dice, and you can see there it's marked out how many 5 pluses it's rolled. And I've just failed a moral test and that, that unit is gone. Now I could delete them from the board, uh, but a bit like being in the club, sometimes you just move them to the back of the board. And in some cases, I mean in this one, it's sometimes nice to see how many casualties that unit has, has faced. If they get messy, delete them, but um, sometimes it's easier rather than counting up who's left, seeing who's died. I think I'm failing my uh, activations again, so it's, it's all movement is on his side. I 
I even failed to counter charge as well, so he charges me and I don't get my bonus bonus attack. He wipes out half my unit here in a moment. Uh, yeah, we're fleeing. I think I managed to hold on with one point. We do forget our leader bonuses. Um, so I don't play with any special rules. I think this army gets like a free movement or something like that. So instead of having my failed activations, if I really wanted a movement, I could have said, right, I've got this movement. Uh, we don't play with that, but we do play with the leader bonuses. He got the great leader, the one where his leader can pretty much pass any, uh, any role. And I got the one where I'm a fierce Lionheart and I can re-roll to attack dice, so I completely forget about that. So I'm doing a skirmish shot, I do a skirmish where I move up half my movement and shoot. And that's quite a successful hit, I think. I think I get, I do break him and make him flee or retreat. Yeah, so yellow token there, showing he's broken. My Baron's failed to activate again, giving the deactivation back to him. And he's rallied his uh, sergeants. His man of arms are wiping out my medium infantry. Those man of arms hitting on three plus and having four armor. We break for lunch. I save the game, and we we come back. So he's showing me that his archers uh, what shoots. He failed the activation. Uh, I've rallied my horsemen. It looks like I'm peppering with arrows again from my uh, skirmishers. The skirmishers want to try and get into this rough ground because they don't have any negatives of being on rough ground. Uh, see if I can lower the man of arms onto it and reduce their armour. I have wiped out those sergeant units with, with my arrows on the bottom. I go into retreat to try and give my man of arms, uh, my, my man of arms, my fierce footman. Uh, bide them some time to see if I can pull the game back. I think I meet his charge there, and uh, yeah, it's not really helping me meet, meeting his charge, to be honest. But uh, it's good that I'm a, I'm a. There are two strength levels. You've got your 12, full strength, 12 dice, half strength, 6 dice. So even having one unit failed to charge, pass the turn back to him. It's just these men at arms mopping me up. So I'm just drawing there. That I, this is what I intended, then draw across through it, didn't work. So I think next video, if we can both do that, sort of with, it, with the arrows, I'll make a cleaner video. But I'm just going to go with this this time around. I think we stop here because my leader unit has died and we're stopping checking rules. Uh, if a leader unit dies, do the, does my entire army have to take a courage test? Now, I don't think it's going to affect me because all my armies, are, my remaining units are at full strength, so it's going to be very hard for them to fail a courage test. But they may break if I roll badly, as I have been rolling. I think I've given away my plans. I think I should have, I said I should have gone round the houses and not met those men of towns with my, my cavalry. I should have tried to engage those expert archers. Expert archers are fantastic. I need to check do they hit on 4 plus or 5 plus spot. What? Did I, I'm going to have to check that now actually. While you're watching. Chart. Footman. Yeoman. Serfs. Archers. It comes 4 plus. Yes, I need to change my cheat sheets. And I also noticed uh, in the game that I mistakenly moved my first foot six inches instead of eight. So when I'm a mobile army, I should have been hitting those charges much more, much more often. Though then again, I think it makes up that I didn't make really pass many activation rolls. I've been broken. I'm fleeing into the rough terrain. My archers want to come around and skirmish and shoot and javelin. Uh, they failed a few times. I think they finally passed. We're coming to the end of the game. How many units? It ends when there's five units left. Uh, there's a bit of a two and throw up here. He starts to fail some of his activations now. Finally. And I'm fleeing off the board. And again, I'm using the wrong movement rates. Moving three inches instead of four, because I move eight. But I do eventually flip the board there. I think that's it. 
How many units? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, five units on the board. That was end game. And I think we work out it is something like 16 points to my opponent's force on the southern, southern side of the table. And around about 12 points for me, for because his units are quite expensive. So all the casualties at the bottom there. And that's it. So yeah, thanks for watching. Um, I think there's lots I can do to tidy up. Uh, I want to try and get the audio of his banter as well, and then it'll be a much longer one because it'll be live, uh, recorded, and we'll get the banter of the table as well. Because uh, there were, were some nice quips in there, obviously. Uh, fortunately, when I recorded today, I don't know if it's my conservatory, it's sounding very much like a goldfish bowl. Uh, so, cool. I'm going to leave it there. Uh, that is my first game, my second game, my second game on Universal Battle System, and my second game of Lion Rampant with an opponent. Uh, I have got some screenshots um, of another game, and I've also got a solo game where I played myself with my 15 mil armies, uh, where I was using orcs and orcs are my knights and elves and centaurs uh, to represent some of these. So I might pop on some music at the end of this video, and uh, you can make a gallery of those photos really uh, without much of an explanation. So cool, I'm looking forward to doing more of these videos and I am very tempted to do a tabletop simulator one but I love the simplicity of Universal Battle System 2. You, It is free, there is a paid one where you can make your own armies and save them which would be a great um, time saver and also it's a monthly subscription is about the price of what you would have paid subs if you paid subs when you go to your local clubs uh, and that's very common in, in England anyway. Um, to pay for room hire and such in the you know church halls and things that we do and there's a yearly, yearly one which is a much better discount uh, so yeah if I get a few more games in this month and really sort of double down it I think I might might go down that route uh, so if you're interested if you want to be an opponent and you're in sort of the uh, UK time time zone uh, drop a, a, a message below or, or PM me private message me somehow and do like and subscribe thank you very much for watching this has been Mark Dice Tales and his experience with Line Rampant on Universal Battle. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.